Hi everyone, it's Nona Grace and I'm from Western New York. I have to tell you, my daughter speeds up my video. She tells me I talk too slow. <laughs> I don't think I talk too slow. I think I talk just the right speed. She's so used to talking so fast and listening to things that go so fast that she thinks I talk slow. Okay, now let's do the thankful challenge. <laughs> we'll move right along. We'll do the thankful challenge first. And I was tagged by Mark the Arkansas Woodcutter. And this challenge was started by Simple Life Reclaimed, Kimber Keto Life, which now has changed her name to Every Day with Kimber. I don't know if you can find it under that yet. I know I had a hard time finding it under that. So I still kind of put the Kimber Keto Life and I find it that way. And what am I thankful for today? I didn't even think about it. What am I thankful for today? I'm thankful that um, I'm thankful that Emily came to visit <laughs> and she spent a lot of time with me and she will probably she will be back tomorrow because I'm cooking a turkey tonight. I'm <laughs> thankful that I get to cook a turkey tonight and I hope all of you get to have your favorite food tomorrow. I know on Christmas I don't want turkey where a lot of people have turkey on Christmas. I don't have turkey on Christmas. I, I don't have, have my ham either. No. I have my pig's feet <laughs> or pork hocks and my pasta suku, which is spaghetti and sausage, of course, because that's for the rest of the family and I don't make meatballs. Okay, now what this video about is today is I have a lot of questions in my, you can have that, yeah, mm. I guess. Um, my, my video today was I had a lot of comments that were made um, and I kind of like to just, I'm just going to go over the kind of like the questions and kind of talk through them I guess so it's 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 still on foster care and some of the stuff that was said and one of them is on actually on motorcycles <laughs> so this one is for Bob and Bodine now Bob had a hard time think seeing me with a helmet on I think he doesn't see me as a rider on a motorcycle I do ride I don't ride as often as I should Jim is the die-hard rider. He is the one that has been riding, even in this terrible rain that we had today. He rode. <laughs> the temperature is not too bad. He did switch bikes. He went from the two-wheel bike because they sanded the roads because we did have a little bit of snow. But they haven't salted the roads yet, so he's on the gold wing until they decide to salt or the snow gets to be too much. We have the the type of insurance that you can drive as long as the weather is decent you can drive so it goes year round even though we have live in an area where there is snow and um, I think it was Bodine he was taking his last ride for the season you don't have to Bodine I'm sure you'll get a few more days that you'll you'll like taking your bike out and same with Bob he'll be taking his bike out okay that's the motorcycle stuff then I have a little video I want to put in because Gloria asked me about my wigs and wanted to know if I had any uh, danger with the children that were placed with me. And so this little video will go to that right now. Today I noticed in my comments that I have questions as to how I store my wigs. Well, I don't have one on right now, so you won't be seeing me. But this is how I store them. I started out with this, it's a container that I had it's a tall container and it's got a bottle in there covered with a bag and then I put the wig on top of it and this is this is the um, I think this is the Vicky wig the brownish colored one it's the toasted toasted almond butter toasted almond I think is what it was called and that's that one then this is my Abby wig, or no, this is not my Abby wig. This is my Casey wig, sorry. This is Casey. And they had these stands on sale, so I bought the stands. And Casey, if you notice, I'll turn her around. She's a rather smooth wig. But that's Casey. Okay, and this is my newest one, the one I just bought. 
me see what her name was. I forgot what her name was. I put it on the inside. I, it's, it's whispered away, whisked away, whisked away. Now, if you notice, whisked away has a lot more body to it. She's so pretty. She really is pretty. They're light, they're airy, but that's whisked away. And I got her the same color as I did in Casey. And I'll show you the backs of the both of them because I'm sure some of you think I'm wearing the same wig because of the color, but look at the backs. There's a there is a difference. I love this new one. This one is the new one, whisked away. Then there's Abby. Now, Abby, I didn't have a another stand, so I'm using a cake. I'll show you the cake in a minute after I show you the wig. This was Abby. This was my very first one. And she's a pretty wig, too. This is the blonde. She's very pretty. Very pretty. Okay, now we'll show you the cake. Because I didn't have another stand, I put her on a cake. And this this shape helped um, keep her spread out the way I like her. And this cake is from when Emily was a teen queen for the the national teen, teen competition for um, camping. She was she was a Miss New York for our area, and she competed against a bunch of girls from all over the United States and Canada, and she was fourth runner-up, and she got one of the top talent awards. So this was the cake from that. They made, I think they made the cake, or somebody made I think Emily made the cake. I'm not even sure. I think they had them do it, and it's just a cardboard. It's just cardboard, nothing else. So that's the wigs that I have. And I had another question, and it was about danger with um, foster children or their own children, how I handled that, and I will show you. I used to keep my knives up here till one day I had a foster child that was threatening me with a knife. So I ended up putting my knives down here. And so when he gets mad, when he was mad, if he was swinging this cupboard, this cupboard would just fly. And if you notice, he have to, he can't be in a rage to do it because the knives are kept now under here. They were back further, but I brought them out a little bit because I don't have anybody here threatening me with a knife. So I have my knives in here, the block, the knives is in there. So I had to actually change something to protect myself and my family because he was one that would would wheel and deal a knife if he could. And one day when the foster parent came in, he was wheeling and dealing a knife. And I had tried to tell her that this is what he does. And she didn't believe me until she walked in on it and saw. You know, seeing is believing sometimes. And it's sad that she had to believe by seeing only and not taking my word for it. The only thing that I requested with um, foster kids, kid, foster children is I did not want any fire starters. I was fearful of that. I took everything else, and there's a lot of kids that there's, um, they were, oh, I don't know, they were dangerous in other ways, but I took them anyways. And somebody else had asked, I don't remember where it was, something about um, how old were my children. My children, when we started foster care, were like two and one, one and two years old. And so I used to take, I started out taking little kids that were like nine and ten. And then I ended up taking a few that were under. And I really preferred to stay with the ones that were teenagers. But this way, there was never any competition between my children and my biological children and the foster children. And so when they would complain about me doing something for 
my little ones that were babies, I'd say, well, I can diaper you and give you a bottle too if you like, and then they'd realize that the request was kind of not necessary. But as the kids got older, it got a lot harder to um, try to keep the age differences apart. But I found that my kids, well, my, my biological kids, they're all my kids, but my biological kids would basically have their their um, favorite things to do and the other children had their favorite things to do. And so they found their way to live in harmony together. Aunt's place wanted to know, wondered if she could ever be a foster parent. Yes, anybody can be a foster parent. Um, they, at one time they had to be, you had to be married and you had to have one of the parents staying at home. But they've, they've lessened, they've loosened up on that rule. Now you can be a single foster parent and you don't, you can have a full-time job. The thing is, if you're going to do that, it's a lot harder to keep track of what's going on in your house because, um, well, you want to, if you go into foster care and you take the babies, it's real hard to give them back because you worry about them. And if you take the older kids, you got to make sure that you know where everything is located because they will steal. They're not used to having um, boundaries because a lot of them come from houses where everything belongs to everybody and there are no doors on the, even, they don't even have a separate bedroom. They maybe have a curtain or a sheet that divides the space that they're in and so they really don't know boundaries. Rusty and Liddy. Rusty had made the comment about, he could see why the kids were placed with me. Liddy had made a comment concerning not giving up on the kids. Well, I had a girl. This girl was 13 when she came, no, 12 when she came and 13 when she left. She was in five foster homes before she came to me. And when she came to me, she was doing all the stuff that she did at the others that got her kicked out. So, and I used to say to her, I said, you know, there are buttons. I do have buttons, and I do have an eject button, so stop pushing the buttons and trying to find out which one will eject you out of my house because there's something about you that I like, and I don't know when you'll hit that button. You don't know when you'll hit that button, so just stop. And so she eventually realized she was the one that was grounded to me for six weeks, too. She said to me at, after the six weeks, she says, I thought nobody would ever care for me or care about me. And she said, I guess you do. Because she saw how she and I were pretty much buddies for six weeks. She, Whatever she did, mm -hmm. I did. And whatever I did, she did. It was togetherness. That, oh, and she did yeah. come back. She, she, I had her as a foster child, and then she had to go home, and she really cried. She did not want to go back to her own house. And she was there for... Oh, I don't know, maybe a couple of years. And then she, her father called me and wanted to know if I could just take her back to just come live with us. And I said, sure, I can do that. So she came to live with us just as, like, if your niece or nephew came to live with you or someone that we were related to just came to live with you. And so she stayed with me, and she was with me for a few months, and then he said that he was ready for her to come back home. So she went back home. But then she ended up back in foster care again, after because she, she had gotten pregnant and had a baby and she ended up in foster care again and by that time I had had Laura so they they asked her where she wanted to go and she wanted to come back to my house so she learned how to take care of her baby by watching me take care of my baby so that was a good training for her because whatever I did for my Laura she had to do for her little one and they were maybe a month difference in age they were real close in age there was uh, brandy had mentioned that she wanted a big family and i also wanted a big family and jim only wanted he wanted a small family we ended up with four children having the foster children with us gave me that opportunity and <laughs> gave me a <laughs> chance to cook the many meals that i enjoyed doing that was something that too that was a um when the kids were brought I liked pasta, and so if they didn't like pasta, I'd say, you can't stay. So if they liked macaroni, they could stay, and if they didn't, then they'd have to leave because I used to like to eat pasta almost every day. I was I made it many different ways. There are so many ways that you can make a dish of macaroni, and I never made macaroni and cheese as one of them. So 
that tells you there was a lot to choose from. So if they didn't like pasta, they had to leave. But if they liked pasta, they could stay. I actually had a girl that was, she was bouncing around from foster home to foster home. She'd be one week with this one and one week with that one and one week with, and then two weeks with me and then move on to somebody else for a week and a week and then two weeks with me. And she kept coming back to my house and she'd always be two weeks at my house. And I asked the caseworker, I said, how come she's always two weeks with me and only one week's in the week in the other homes? And the reason was is she liked my food. So I cooked a lot of macaroni, and that was her favorite food, too. So she used to not run away, because she used to run away. If you stayed more than a week, she used to be a runner. She was one that ended up in an institution. I only had two children out of the... We had approximately 200 children that came through our doors. But we were also a therapeutic foster home, which meant they were there just for the short time until they could be returned home or go to an institution. And we were a respite home, which meant they would come here if somebody wanted to go on vacation. I used to have those children. And we were an emergency placement home, so that meant if they had some children that they couldn't find a placement for it that night, they'd come and Two stay with Two o'clock in the morning, right. three o'clock in the morning. They would call us, and we would take them, and then they would look for a new home for them that they could find during the day, daylight hours. And the one girl that was bouncing around, bouncing around, she was one of the ones that went to an institution. I had another one that went to an I only had two children out of all these children that had to go to an institution. And the one I kept saying, gosh, you've got to stop this or you're going to end up on the big house on the hill. And he used to laugh at me because he thought that I was kidding there was a big house on the hill. I said, no, it's a big house on the hill. When we took him to the institution, he goes, ah, oh, so that's the big house on the hill. He was really surprised that there really was a big house on the hill, and he ended up having to be a residential. And the other girl, one went to Hopevale, which was, I felt like it was a college grounds, but there was, it, the grounds were beautiful, but to have to be in the dorm with the other girls, I'm sure it was difficult. That I, she stated that I instilled good values in these children with having them um, go to church and find the Lord and Hardneck Farms, Wendy. And I had, I had, this is so funny because I had some girls that were in about four foster homes and they kept getting kicked out. And the reason they were getting kicked out is they would dress all in black and they would have black eye makeup on, real black eye makeup, real black. They had their hair dyed black. They wore black clothes. They had black nail polish, black lipstick. They were, they, and they would do this chanting because they were, they said they believed that they, they worshipped the devil. So what did I do? Because and all these kids, they couldn't possibly be worshipping the devil and, and be part of the devil's harem or whatever. So I get my holy water out. I have holy water. Look at this. I have a big bottle and I have a little bottle. I brought the big one in mainly because you can see the says holy water. So what I did is I took the holy water and it's got a little spout type thing and I went <laughs> on them and they go and I go did it burn and they go no and I said well the devil hasn't got you yet you're still and you're still God's child so <laughs> they that after that they stopped wearing the black they stopped the chanting they stopped doing all that other stuff because they weren't scaring me with their nonsense, and I had holy water, so mm. <laughs> they knew that it wasn't going to work in this house, so they stopped it. Jane wanted to know if I had had any training for to become a foster parent. Well, for the type of foster parents that we were, we were therapeutic foster homes, which meant we had teenagers and kids that were supposed to be going on to institutions, and in order to deal with them, we had extra training. But most of the foster parents just had, if you were told by the courts to go to parenting classes, that's the type of classes they had. They they were based basically on younger children, not the teenagers. You never got any training on teenagers unless you were a therapeutic foster home. And there were only eight of those in our county. And we were the only one on the north end of the county. Now, our county is divided into the north and the south. 
and it was the other ones were all in the south end. We were it's the like only ones. Like thirty six miles from end to end, or forty miles from end to end of the county. Yeah, to get from our county to their county, whatever. Well, our end of the county to their to end their end, county. and then their end went on farther. But yeah, so that's why our county was divided into two sections and um, so that was the training that we had. See, do any of my kids, did any of my kids want to be foster children? That's another question that Jane had. Well, Emily said that she thought about it, but nah, she said no. In fact, when Emily was a little girl, little, she was little, little, I remember she was climbing on the counter and I said, Emily, get down from there. And the tone that I used must have sounded very stern. And one of the other foster children pipes up and says, you can't talk to her like that. She's not your daughter. Well, Emily was my daughter, but Emily for years and years looked a little different than the rest of the kids. And so she actually thought she was a foster child. And they used to treat Emily really, really good, but they were not very nice to the other children a lot of times because they're my children in, in their eyes. But Emily was... Emily wasn't mine, so she was okay. So as you could see, even though I was supposed to treat everybody equal, the children didn't treat us equal that were brought into our house. They looked at us as not equals. They used to call me names, a lot of names, those <laughs> kids did. I used to have a lot of swearers, people that swear. So kids that would swear, they would swear really bad. They were really good at it. In fact, the word shut and up wasn't even allowed in my house. You had to say, be quiet. So when they would use their really bad words, I would make the sign of the cross. And I'd say, oh my God, I'm heartily sorry. And they'd say, what are you praying for? And I says, I'm praying because you just used bad words and I'm asking God to forgive you. And until you stop saying them, I have to keep praying. So when they'd say it again, I'd do the same thing over again. And finally, 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 they stopped because they didn't want me to make the sign of the cross and they didn't want me to start saying my prayer because I used to say it every single time and that was a lot that I had to say it. They also called me a bad word. It was the B word, the B-I-T-C-H word. Yes, I spell it. I don't say it. And I used to say, thank you. And they go, I don't think you know what I'm saying. I'm calling you. I go, I do know what you're calling me, but I don't think you know what you're calling me. And they go, yes, I do, and I'm, I'm calling you, and then they say the word, the B-I-T-C-H. And I'd say, thank you. And what it was is I said to them, and they go, well, what's it mean, they say to me. And I said, well, I know what it means, but do you know what it means? And they would try to tell me what it meant, and I would say, mm-mm, that's not what it means. And I would tell them it means that I'm a beautiful intelligent, talented, charming human being. And so that's what we all are. I will see you all tomorrow. I <laughs> hope you enjoyed this video. That's another little story of the stories that I tell. Bye.